Welcome to Combat Sense. I'm Daniel Verkirk and I'll be your host and instructor throughout this series. I'd like to thank those of you who have written with your opinions and suggestions for the show. We welcome your stories and questions about real life experiences regarding confrontations in other scenarios. It's these real life situations where Combat Sense helps you the most. For those of you who are new to the show, Combat Sense is about learning the most effective and logical ways to defend oneself from various situations. Our instructions are based from the science of human actions and reactions and the awareness of possible attacks and counters. During each show we cover the most practical and effective ways to deal with a particular confrontation. In episode 1 we covered face-to-face -face close quarter confrontations. In episode 2 we covered confrontations, actions and reactions for situations when an aggressor grabs you by the wrist and controls you and your movements. Episode 3, we covered attacks from directly behind as well as both angles from behind. If you have missed any of these episodes, you can order them online at www.combatsense.tv. Here in Episode 4, we will be covering actions and reactions, Combat Sense Defense from a various assortment of kicks. The first kick we'll be dealing with is a front thrust kick. Now as you're going to, as you may be in a situation where you're coming across a front thrust kick your opponent, if he does a low block, which my partner did, in this situation when I came to kick and he came with a low block, I'm going to follow through and I'm going to punch him in the face. There's pretty much no doubt about that. And with a front thrust kick, it's not a kick where you're holding your weight here and kicking, it's actually digging into him. So as I go to kick him and he digs in, I'm going to continue my body weight punching and carrying on. So it's not very smart to come with that low block. Especially from the situation where he was here inside. Now if my opponent was coming to front cross kick me, I may have crossed, crossed with a low block there if I wanted to do a low block. But I wouldn't really want to, to do this in this situation because I'm giving up my own arm. What you have to be aware of is as he's coming to kick you and you're doing this, you always have to have your outside arm guarding. Because anybody who kicks this in this situation as he comes to kick and comes here, you're going to be hit. There's no doubt about that. Now instead of coming with a outside low block from a front thrust, probably the best thing that you should do is if your opponent comes to front thrust kick you, would be to move out of the way. If you move out of the way, that allows you to continue hitting him. It's most important to move out of the way. It's probably the smartest, most combat sense thing to do here. Because if you don't, you're going to be hit. In this situation, as I come to kick my opponent and front thrust kick him, if he moves to the other side, I'm still going to be in a position to carry on fighting and hitting him. So it's very important to move to the outside of the leg that's kicking, not across his other leg, because you will be hit. So it makes combat sense on which way you should move and not move. Now, I'm going to demonstrate a proper low block. If you're going to use a low block, and I'll explain why you would or wouldn't do it. As my opponent comes to front thrust kick me, and I move out of the way, blocking him, guarding myself in, in a position to counter him, that's one thing I could do. But what that does actually is, as in slow motion, as he came to kick, I moved out of the way and blocked this. I could have still had this hand to strike him. So if I did bring my arm down and leave myself open just in case. Some people don't have enough follow through to have their body momentum come through you. And if he did, didn't have enough body through me and I want to block, I'd still be in range from his punches to my face. So I try not to give up this arm down, leaving this part of me open. So the best thing, like I said before, is as he comes to hit you, to move away, still punching him and being able to guard yourself from your opponent coming to hit you. So that if he did, I covered this arm with this position, still being able to punch and carry through, hitting my attacker. 
Now another good kick that somebody may try to use on you is a front snap kick. The front snap kick is usually used with a, a lead leg while you're this close to somebody and you're going to snap them in the groin area. It's very common in this situation. Now what you wouldn't do again is as soon as somebody comes to kick you, put your arms down. So if I go to kick him and he puts down his arms, I'm going to again punch him and carry through. Some people might use that kick as a distracting point to lead into a punch. They're not even really trying to kick you hard. They're just trying to distract you so that they can continue punching you in the face. So it's really not smart to drop your arms down in this situation. Now, what makes combat sense, if you understand the trajectory and the target, the, the movement that he has to make, to kick me between my legs, as he goes to kick me, I cross my leg. Now what I'm doing here is just bringing my leg up in this position. Because the kick is going to come between my legs and come up. But moving in this position, it's going to allow me to guard the kick. Now I wouldn't stand like this and just guard the kick, leaving my body behind. Because if somebody was kicking, following through with a the punch, they might even knock me over. So what I do is when I bring this up, I'm actually leaving, leaning forward on an attack momentum. So as my opponent comes to kick me, I guard this continuing through with my hand to strike him, carrying through, hitting him. That's probably the best thing that makes combat sense for that front snap kick. Also in a front thrust kick, what's common is for people to try to grab your kick. As, as I go to front thrust my opponent and he comes and grabs my kick, it's most likely that this punch is going to punch him in the face. If it's not going to punch him in the face, I'm going to grab a hold of him and probably take him to the ground again because I just throw or even if I fell down backwards holding on to him, it would take him with me. So I don't, it wouldn't be smart for him to grab me in this manner because it's still, both of his arms are being used to hold on to my leg. My hands are still free, whether I'm coming to hit him, stick my fingers in his eye, grab him into this position. He's not doing nothing to me. I have all the options to do whatever I want to him at this point in time. If I'm going down, I'm going down, but he's coming with me. Now, if you were to grab the kick, the best thing to do would be as he comes to front thrust kick me, is to move outside in this position guarding the possibility of him punching you. Now, if he's punching me across, I'll cross him over here and take him down. Now, if he comes to kick me again, usually what happens here is you're taking this position, you're punching him in the face, you turn his foot away from him in this position so that he cannot climb up on you. Because what your opponent's going to probably want to do is, once you grab onto that kick, as you're moving out of the way, he can still make his body come to you. He wants to grab on and hold on to you. But it's better that you're on the outside because it makes it a lot harder for him. Now what prevents that from happening is when he comes to kick, of course I move out of the way, grabbing this position, throwing him out in this position, grabbing onto the leg this way. If I want to knee him between the legs, or if I want to kick out his other leg, or whatever I want to do, I might just want to throw him down and then make my getaway. Now the main thing for you to remember is never to drop your arms down from those kicks because as you do you're just presenting an opening for your opponent or your attacker to come and hit you in the face, in the throat, in the eyes. He has every option to do things so you really got to watch that you don't. Even if people have a, a reflex action if he comes in front snap kick me and I put my arms down, it's probably I'm getting hit. You always have to remember, if he comes in front snap kick me and I go to grab his foot, I'm still going to be hit. You really have to stay away from dropping your hands down from your center line. You've got to make sure that you defend yourself at all times in this situation. Because people will lead you into things. They may come, I may come like this, come to snap him. And it is, it's just a lead in to continue my attack to punch him. So you really have to be aware of what the front snap kick will do or the front thrust kick will do. The energy that each of those has. The front snap kick is a kick that just snaps upwards. 
whether it gets to be into the, the chin or into the groin area. The front thrust kick is going to thrust right through you, knocking you forward. So you have to know how to move given those situations. If the energy is coming through you, you have to move out of the way. If you block it, you would never block it this way because his other punch is coming. If he's coming to kick me, I have to move this way if I'm going to block it. I don't really need to drop my hand down the top. As he comes to kick me, I should just move out to the side, put myself in a position to counter right away. I'm not going to move and then counter. My movement will be countering. So as he comes to kick and I move, I'm moving to move in. It's like I'm connected to a rubber band. As I go to move away, it's throwing me in. You're never going to move, wait, and then move because he's going to turn into you. Now, if, it, if somebody had enough momentum to go right through you, then you're going to be behind them, of course, which is going to give you an advantage. But not everybody kicks with that much force. Another kick you may find in a confrontation while fighting is a roundhouse kick. Now, I may come to attack my opponent with a roundhouse kick, and as I do, if he blocks it, I'm still going to continue fighting him and punching him because he's not protecting himself properly. Now you can see, if you're being kicked with that roundhouse kick, what mistakes some people make is to bring their arm up or to bring their arm down, and they may be suckered into somebody coming to kick low and then coming up for a high shot and vice versa. But what you have to be, some people may think that it's best just to keep your guard in. And it is pretty good for some people that don't know any better. So let's say my opponent's coming to roundhouse me, and I guard, guard it, keeping this in. Some people think that they're very strong, where some people can't kick a roundhouse very hard because they practice only to hit light and they don't put their full body behind the technique. Some people can really roundhouse hard. Now, even if you put up your arm to guard yourself, you may be guarding your ribs, but the power is going to pound right through you. So you really have to be aware of what somebody's doing. A lot of people, they do high kicks. And the, the thing about high kicks is you're starting to lose some power as the higher you can go. Not only that, the longer the kick takes to come up, unless you're walking into it. Now, a high roundhouse kick isn't very effective in most situations. And one of the reasons why this is because people compromise their body force and stance and their balance because they usually have to lean over in a way to bring their foot up high. And doing so allows an attacker to come in. So if my opponent was coming to roundhouse kick me, and I come into him, I'm going to stop that technique before it becomes effective because I'm jamming the force of the technique. It's, it's just like a punch. If a punch, before it, reaches, before it reaches its target, it doesn't have much power in the in-between. You need the impact at that point in time. So if somebody comes to kick you, they're going to have to need a certain distance to make that technique effective. In this situation, even if my opponent was coming to kick me at a mid-range, the best thing for me to do would be to guard that technique before it comes up. Because that leg has to come up past the hips on its way up. I'm just going to, and it needs the distance from here to here to reach me. So understanding the kick and understanding the distance of that effective kick. Now that kick, if he's closer to me, it'll be harder for him to kick me that high without leaning backwards from the roundhouse kick. And as he leans backwards to kick me, I'm going to come in and fill that space. So it's most important to understand what somebody's doing and why it is effective and how to stop it from being effective. And the best thing to do from that kick would be to jam the kick before it comes to you or to move in the direction of the kick is coming. So if he's come and kick me, and I'm moving in this position, what it does is it allows me to go with the flow of the kick so I don't get the full impact. Keeping that in mind, if I were to kick somebody like that, I would sort of move around, and then when I change my direction so that my opponent changes direction, I would kick them and let them run into my kick. Another popular thing that you might see is a low roundhouse kick. 
And people will try to kick out the leg, so kick out the thigh, or they'll kick out the knee, and they'll just keep trying to kick you and come in to hit you from on top. One of the best things to do when somebody's coming to kick you in the leg is, as he comes to kick you, you just let your leg go loose. So as your leg's going loose, if, if, if I leave my leg stable, it becomes a lot denser object, and I'm going to have to take the impact a lot greater. So one of the best things for me to do is just to let this go back and then I can continue my attack onto him. So what I'm doing is I'm letting the energy sort of go and then come back to hit him. Which is a lot smarter thing to do because if, if we're fighting here and he keeps kicking me in the leg and keep, as he keeps kicking me in the leg, it's going to start to wear on me. So I really don't want to be in that position. So the first thing that you would, would do would be to just pick up your leg and try to guard it. The second thing to do is to pick up your leg and just let it go light. So he's sort of like kicking the wind in a way. So as he comes to kick me and I kick up my leg and go light, I then can continue my attack into my opponent. Now in this situation, your attacker is fairly close to you. They want to roundhouse you in the head. Now as your opponent comes to roundhouse you and you're in this position, and they hit you, it's only because you didn't continue hitting them. It's important never to like think that I'm going to give up my block or my center line, my center defense. So if he comes to kick me and I make my leg come, arm come up to block the kick, this punch should be coming into my face. So it, it'd be a really stupid thing for me to do would be as he comes to kick me, I put my arm up to block it and get hit in the face. So what you should be doing is, as soon as somebody, le you're in this situation, he leans back to kick, and you should be coming straight in, attacking your opponent. Because everybody needs to counterbalance their own body force and energy. To lean back is only far enough to get that kick up there. If you lean any further, you're going to lose your balance. Knowing that, that should make you know what makes combat sense in this situation. The combat sense says, if he's going, just keep him going and it's going to knock him off his balance. In this situation, some people, it, it's really uh, a vulnerable, compromising place to put yourself into. For you to, to be this close and lean back to kick me, the kick's not going to have half the power as my forward motion is going to have. I'm not going to see chase that kick or move around with that kick. As soon as we're here and he leans back, I'm coming in and I'm going to knock him down. I don't even have to really try hard to knock him down because as he's leaning back, I just have some resistance closing and jamming his kick and it's going to knock him over by itself without me even really trying to do anything. One of the things that you really should be aware of is most people I've seen who do kicking they make the mistakes of dropping their arms down for whatever reason, maybe to get their balance. I've seen actually some people put both arms behind them like this to kick. And the thing about that is, if I go to kick him like that, and I'm in this position, and he, I have no defense, no blocking ability. So it's very smart just to attack somebody. So you see, the best thing to do, uh, in my combat sense opinion, is to attack somebody who's kicking, especially if they have to lean back to do so. Because if you're in a position where you're trying to block and leave that space that they need to fill the kicks in for you, that works against you, which doesn't make combat sense. Anybody who's being distracted with kicks like this or like this or like this, doing these blocks, it's going to be, you can't keep up with it and somebody's going to come through and you're going to leave an opening and they're going to take advantage of it. Now if you're thinking with combat sense, as my opponent comes to kick me, I come in and I come in with my hands right into his face. It's probably one of the most effective and efficient things to do. Don't be afraid or affected by these kicks to make yourself have to drop and leave your main guard down chasing these kicks. The best thing to do is have a frame of mind where it's, I want to fill the space. If he's coming to kick me, I fill the space and continue going through. It's going to be the best thing for me because Soon as somebody does kick, they're giving up their balance. I wouldn't say on all kicks, but at least on these roundhouse kicks. The next kick we'll be defending against will be a side kick. As I come to side kick my opponent and he moves out of the way, 
I still have a position to carry on striking him because he moved in the wrong manner. So you really have to be aware of which side you're moving to. In this situation, as I do kick and he moves there, I'm still coming through with my energy to hit him. You can see it's advantageous still for me because I have the ability to cross my other arm over as well as this arm. Now, if my opponent was going to come to sidekick me, my best way would be to move out in this way. So it puts me pretty much behind him in a position to hit him with either hand. If I wanted to, as he came to kick me, I could move out of the way again, grabbing the leg, taking him down in this position, where I would either come to kick him in the groin and get away. Yeah, a lot of kicks make people vulnerable. and They might not be aware of it, but most people who are kicking, they're sort of scared to be in a fight themselves. They're trying to stay away from you, trying to keep the distance. In this situation, my opponent's coming to sidekick me. As he comes to sidekick me, you can see, he's turning his back to me, his front, his both arms away from me. It really makes him vulnerable. So I have a couple choices to, to do here. As he comes to sidekick me, I can come in again and attack him and come behind him. Or he could come to sidekick me and I could move out of the way and then come back over top of him. It's very simple in this situation. The worst thing that you can do is stay in front of somebody and try to block or guard his kicks because it's going to allow his energy to be stopped, which is what he likes to do. When people kick an object or kick a person, their resistance is what allows them to stop, stop and regain their, their balance so that they can continue the attack. So in this situation, as he comes to kick me and I move out of the way and his arms are down and he's pretty much facing the wrong direction, it allows me to do any technique I want. If I wanted to take this leg, I could take this leg. The main thing is I can get away, avoid the confrontation, avoid the attack. Some people who sidekick, they're actually putting everything behind themselves so that if they kick you, they can knock you about five feet back. And other people, which is where you move outside and let them go by and come up behind them. It's very simple. Now some other people, they try to kick with a quick snap. As my opponent's coming to quick kick, and I move off to the side, I still can be in this position. Even if he wanted to stay where he is and do a quick snap, I just move this position, he can't really hit me because he didn't commit enough weight to me. Now, one of the things you wouldn't want to do is, if he comes to quick kick me, and I move in this position, I still come in line with his hands. So I've got to make sure that I'm never going to move across his other leg that makes it easier for him to counter. So the main thing in defending against somebody who's kicking is to move outside of that kick. It's really easy with a side kick. The other thing that you can do is jam the side kick again, just like I taught before. So as he comes to kick, I bring up my knee, jamming that kick, allowing me to guard. I keep this shoulder pushed forward because this shoulder has to retract for this hand to come back and hit me. So you have to make sure that you keep this on somebody while you do your technique. It prevents him from switching around. The other thing that you may want to be aware of is somebody, since he can't come this way, he may come the other way, right? So if you're in this position and he's coming from the other way, I can then block with my arm. Either way, both kidneys are left open for me. His center of gravity is off. I could drop him back this way if I wanted to. It'd be really easy for me to defend myself from that situation. So most people leave themselves vulnerable when they're doing kicks. If you understand the vulnerability, you can take advantage of it really quickly and end a fight as soon as possible. Another kick you might see is a crescent kick. Now this is a kind of dangerous kick to do, but some people use it I would say, I wouldn't really want to use it to attack somebody, but if you're going to use it, you'd probably try to knock somebody, something out of somebody's hand or something like that, or it might be a distracting kick. So if you're trying to, if, if he comes to kick you and you get distracted by that kick, you're probably going to get punched in the face. So you always got to be aware of the distraction. Be aware of the energy. Now the energy of a crescent kick is a kick that comes up and crosses by you. So sort of using a circular motion. The front thrust kick was using a forward motion. A side kick is using a forward motion. A roundhouse kick uses circular motion. Each time if you understand the motion and energy of the attack, you can have a good defense against it. 
In this situation, the easiest thing to do is, as he comes to do a crescent kick, I move out and in. Because the kick has no continual follow through with a forward momentum. So it's easy to do. As he comes to kick me, I just move out and come in. I guard again, so that the hand that I punched him with guards this side as I continue coming out on this side. I have to be aware that any time he may want to turn and cross over so that this hand is going to guard that and I continue hitting him from one side or the other. With the crescent kicks, there's two variations. There's an inside crescent kick when the foot comes across towards the inside of his own body and there's also an outside crescent kick. Now, I would never try to use these kicks. It's kind of silly. It's a lot of energy that's wasted. But if that, then again, if somebody's leading with a weapon or something like that, and you might want to try to put your foot across to knock his weapon out of the way. Or some people who do sport martial arts may try to come with one kick, come for a second kick, and can continue through. But what I'm saying here is, even though he does the one kick, you should be attacking him not giving him the opportunity to do the second kick. You never want to let somebody come up and do a kick and do a kick and do a kick and continue kicking you. It'd be really stupid. The best thing to do would be just to explode right in and get him. That'd be the smartest thing to do. In the, in the outside crescent kick, as he comes to do an outside crescent kick and I come out in this position, I then have to continue hitting him. Now what I have to be aware of, a mistake would be is as he comes to do an outside crescent kick, I come out like this and we trade off. So I don't want to be in a position to trade off and then come up with his roundhouse into my stomach. That would be a mistake, you see. You always have to be aware. Combat sense is making you aware of the possibilities and understanding of the attack so that you can prevent your opponent or attacker from having the advantage that you give him if you're unaware. In this situation, as he comes to do the crescent kick, and I move back, I'm crossing this arm so I can come over top. If he's not punching me, I'm going to keep punching him. If he is punching me, I'm just going to cross this over again and continue punching him over and over again. If I wanted to come in and knee him between the legs, it would be all fine. If I, it doesn't really matter. The main thing is that you avoided the kick and got to hit him. So it's better off to trade off with somebody than to be distracted and be hit. You never want to let a kicker leave you at a kicking distance and remain in that distance so that they can continue kicking you. You have to get the frame of mind. You understand somebody's trying to hurt you. But they want to hurt you badly. You have to close that distance that he needs to give those kicks. It's the main thing that you have to keep in mind. It's great to practice and learn how to do everything. If somebody practices martial arts and they have the ability to do all these kicks, everything has a place and purpose in time. You have to know when to use the kicks for yourself and not against yourself. Here in combat sense, you don't really have to learn how to kick somebody effectively to defend against somebody who's kicking. It's just a matter of understanding the distance and advantages that somebody has while kicking. They're going to try to put you in the position so that they can use the kicks. And if you follow into being distracted by certain things, it only allows them to continue kicking and striking you. It's always going to slow you down. So the best thing that makes combat sense, given the situation when you're fighting somebody who's kicking, is not to play into his kicking game. You have to be serious about what you're doing. You're just looking for an opportunity to get into attack. You got to make sure that you guard your center, whether you're guarding it this way or guarding it this way. Any time that you do guard, you have to have a forward motion. So if I'm coming to guard, I'm coming with a forward motion because I'm going to attack. Pretty much every time somebody comes to kick me, I'm going to attack. If I'm not attacking, I'm getting right out of the way of the kick and then attacking. So, but I cannot move, wait for him to place his body weight and then attack, which gives him a chance to counter me. I have to be aware of the energy. Somebody exerts themselves. If somebody's in this position, they lean back to throw up a kick. I better fill that space in before that kick fills the space into me. It's very important to understand the advantages and disadvantages of kicking. And once you do this, it'll be really easy for you to defend yourself. 
as long as you have the proper mind frame and never get distracted with these kicks because it's going to give somebody an advantage against you. In this situation, we're going to deal with spinning kicks. As my opponent comes to spinning kick me and I move out of the way, it allows him to continue his motion into kicking me. So really, by me moving out of the way, it's just making it easier for him to utilize that space against me. So you really got to watch that you don't fall susceptible to somebody who's kicking because they're always setting you up for that space and time. You really have to be aware. His energy, the distance that he's using, as he's coming to turn into you, you should right away come into him. But what you're doing is actually coming in with your hands, trying to punch him in the head or body or kidneys or back as hard as you can, then making that space to get away. So it's really simple. Everything that I'm teaching you, you've got to understand the advantages of kicks. If I'm in this position and he comes to roundhouse kick me, I'm then coming in to hit him. If I'm in this position and he comes to spinning side kick me, I'm coming in to hit him. You have to have it in your frame of mind. You never let somebody set you up for a kick. Because if you do move, if he's coming to spinning side kick me and I move like this, I still might be caught a bit with the heel, but I'm still coming behind him. So it's not as effective as coming in and jamming the kick right off the bat. So there's situations where you can kick somebody and there's situations where you shouldn't. And once you understand the difference, you can make it work for you. Now the other kicks that people use when spinning, it's usually people who practice martial arts and, and feel that they're fairly effective. But you got to understand why they're effective. Some people may come to do a roundhouse kick, and if you're moving backwards, they're continuing doing a spinning crystal kick, and then into another roundhouse kick. None of this would have happened if when he came to roundhouse kick me, I blocked that roundhouse kick, and come through striking him, it wouldn't give him the opportunity to play those games of one kick, dancing into the next kick, into the next kick. Because some people who are good at kicking will always keep you at that distance, and it'll be like walking. They'll come for a kick, They'll see where you're going, follow the next kick, see where you're going, follow the next kick. Every time they're just kicking you and you're falling into their play. If you understand that you're falling into their play, you don't take that from them. You hold your ground and as soon as they come, you explode jamming their kicks. It takes their game away from them quite quickly. And I would recommend that's probably one of the best things for combat sense. This concludes Combat Sense Episode 4. We hope to see you next week when we cover situations when you're sitting down, either at a bar or a restaurant. Until then, let Combat Sense be with you.